In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with your spirit. You're very welcome to Mass here on this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent. And Mass, of course, is coming from St. Vincent's Parish in Sheffield. We start with the opening antiphon. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. Coming together then as God's family, with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from my graves, from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live and I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord there is fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than watchman for daybreak. With Let the watchman count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. With the Lord there is fullness of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin, 
But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man, Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sister sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will end not in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, Let us go to Judea. The disciples said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you. Are you going back there again? Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours in the day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling, because he has the light of this world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles, because there is no light to guide him. He said that, and then added, Our friend Lazarus is resting, and I am going to wake him. The disciples said, Lord, if he is able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used referred to the death of Lazarus, but they thought that by rest he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, because now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us go to and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to sympathise with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here, and he wants to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house sympathising with Mary saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, 
my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me. But I speak for the sake of all these who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone. There's this story told about a pastor of a small congregation. He kept a meticulous register of all his parishioners. Such was his faith in life after death that whenever a parishioner died, he did not delete their name from the register. He simply wrote after the person's name, changed residence, gone to a better place. The deceased haven't gone away, they've simply gone ahead. We hope to be reunited with all our loved ones in the world to come. Now, scientists tell us that nothing in nature, not even the tiniest little particle, disappears without a trace. Nature does not know extinction. All it knows is transformation. And since man is the apex, the cream of God's creation, it would border on the senseless if death were to nullify his existence, and indeed our existence. Humanist funerals to me fall way short of the mark in the sense that they have nothing to say about the final destiny of man. They can only talk about this life. Now, unfortunately, a lot of church funerals have fallen into the same trap. But the Christian message is loud and clear, and we find it in Jesus' answer to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. Martha said to Jesus, If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Aren't we sometimes tempted to ask the same question, especially when it comes to the untimely death of a loved one? We could ask, Where were you, Lord? when our loved one was taken from us so soon. Many people, you know, blame God when people die tragically or they see him standing on the sidelines, oblivious to human suffering. But the story of Holy Week, which is soon upon us, is that Jesus shares in our brokenness and tragedy-prone world. On hearing of the death of Lazarus, 
Jesus broke down. He was genuinely moved to tears. I think two of the most moving words of scripture are, Jesus wept. Our belief in life eternal is not meant to be a magic formula to relieve us of grief when someone we love passes away. When Jesus wept over Lazarus, the Jews said, See how much he loved him. So, entering into another's pain is a sign of our love for that person. Jesus takes away the sins of the world, but not the suffering of the world. I think it would be a retrograde step for this country if a person who voluntarily ends their own life through euthanasia was seen as a quick fix solution to the suffering borne, often bravely, by the terminally ill. They say that love is stronger than death. It has a kind of eternal resonance about it. It means that death won't catch us off guard if love is the touchstone of our lives. The manner of our death, or even pain associated with it, won't unsettle us. St. Patrick, whose feast we celebrated not too long ago, the same man had many sorrows and hardships in his life, and he writes in his confessions that he wasn't concerned about the manner of his death, but he looks forward to resurrection and eternal life. So, today, the fifth Sunday of Lent, the Church asks us to keep our eyes on the goal, which is life eternal. We're on a journey, however long or arduous, that may be, we are on that journey to the promised land of heaven. There we shall see God. Thank you very much for listening and God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. We now present our prayers and petitions before God, our loving Father. Let us bless our Redeemer who has brought us to this day of salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, our life, we were buried with you in baptism to rise from the dead. Lead us this day along the new path of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You went everywhere, Lord, doing good for everyone. Help us to care for the common good of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Help us to work with other people to build the earthly city, but never let us lose sight of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray that physicians and scientists may come up with a cure for the coronavirus. May those who have contracted the disease have a quick and full recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Healer of souls and bodies, mend our broken lives. Let us receive all the blessings of your holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray now to Mary, our loving mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, listen to our prayers today and grant us the things we ask for through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as through man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, 
He leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And also with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And thank you all for joining with me in this Mass today. And God bless you all. Oh.